yeah. I put in the Gonzales because I only got married recently and my entire professional as well as academic career is under Gonzales and not Hernandez. So um, I just dropped my middle name and made my old last name. Uh, can everyone hear me? Because I can be really loud. Um, so uh, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about why I found this topic to be intriguing. So um, I'm the account manager, so I'm the person that either I do all of the marketing or I, or I approve all of the marketing. So obviously, uh, Social media is a big deal about it. I've done a bunch of branding topics on do's and don'ts. I think there are amazing things that you can do with social media. However, I'm cognizant that there are some potentially negative aspects of it. And um, this was a topic that I feel like is relevant in college as well as just for everyone in general. So the beginning part of sort of our conversation, I want to talk about things that are specific to the college experience as far as being super connected yet sometimes experiencing feelings of isolation or loneliness and then kind of talk about it in general. So I have some slides, there are more points and I really want this to be a conversation. Um, but I just wanted to, to start off first with the article. Um, a little bit about the author, I know I saw some of you guys reading it. A um, little bit about the author, he's done actually quite a few uh, opinion pieces on education. So he's an interesting person things about how um, colleges have failed in the political climate, different things. So if you find um, articles about higher education to be interesting, you can uh, see some other things that he's done. Um, so looking at this, he's a graduate of UNC, um, as well as has his master's degree from Columbia for Journalism, and he's won a bunch of awards. So, you know, I mean, it's an op-ed, so it is his opinion. Um, however, uh, there obviously is research involved in it, so uh, there are you know, some value to be gotten from it. So I looked at a couple of things um, here. So they're talking about college freshmen. Um, I do think a lot of higher education articles are skewed uh, because FIU is a very unusual environment. We are much more of a, I hesitate to use the word commuter, but we are much more. We don't have 25,000 students living on campus. So a lot of times when I read articles, they talk a lot about residential life. Um, so but you don't have to be in a residential life to feel, to feel lonely when you come on campus. We are in a school of 55,000 students, so I can't imagine everyone doesn't feel isolated at, at some point. So, um, you know, I look at a lot of the articles that are written, because they're not always written towards our experience, um, because a lot of people live at home or live in apartments um, or are 20 minutes away from they grew, where they grew up and still are able to maintain relationships. So when I read things like, oh, all of my friends are 10,000 miles away, that's not the experience of every single FIU student. However, um, and having taught the first year experience, almost every single one of my students <clears throat> that I had last semester went to school in Miami-Dade or Broward County. So their, their friends were, were still, and their family were very close by, and yet they still felt, they walked on campus and they were like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? Um, not only did they have a loss of a schedule, and we think, oh, you know, once we're out of high school, we're in control of our schedule. That's a scary thing when you actually think about it because you don't realize that that means you're really in charge. No one's reminding you to do homework. No one's reminding you to do any of that stuff. So I'm very cognizant of the fact that, you know, you can be um, right next to someone you grew up with and still feel these kind of things. Um, so uh, anyone, before we start going into the article, um, for those of you who are able to read it, um, did you want to bring up any thoughts? I know you were reading it. What did you think when you, when you were reading it? Well, I just, I thought about the title of the topic mm -hmm. that we're discussing mm -hmm. and how, why does being more connected entail That's happiness? Right. It's kind of operating under assumption that mm -hmm. it does, but right. obviously we're calling that into question. So. Right. Okay. And what, how did, what, what was your, I mean, do you think it's, is it fair to put that expectation on connectivity? Sure. But then okay. within uh, the context of the article, mm -hmm. what kind of connectivity are we talking about? Are we right. talking about genuine connectivity, mm -hmm. meaningful connectivity, mm -hmm. or just kind of shallow uh, right. ersatz connectivity? Mm -hmm. Okay. And where, um, so obviously his connection, um, you know, I, I sort of, I always do like annotations since I'm, you know, I have a minor in English and I'm all about thesis in liberal arts. I'm all about dissecting everything. So um, I, you know, I kind of looked at the things that really stood out for me, like they're lonely. Students are lonely. And again, I don't think it's just freshmen. I think there are different times in our life where we're on campus or, you know, we go into school. Not every program, my programs were like liberal arts. I didn't have a cohort of people. So when I graduated, I was by myself. You know, like my family was up in the stands, and I was literally with people I'd never seen before because obviously FIU is huge. Now, not everyone has that experience when you're involved in things. Um, 
you know and then when i did my higher education um you know we have cohorts however i graduate in summer so there were three people that graduated with me instead of the 30 that people are used to so i'm kind of used to that experience that not every student has um the other things the find themselves adrift um uh, only reminds them of their physical separation um when you were talking about the connected than ever um, a lot of the research i did and i'm gonna i have some little quotes and um, things to kind of get us thinking was that um Connections serve a purpose if you don't have that face-to-face. -face. At least that's what I feel. So the wonderful thing about social media and WhatsApp or whatever you might want to do is it allows us to connect to people that we can't see every day. However, is it at the expense of spending time or having those meaningful um, non-surface relationships with people that we can see every day? Like I loved, you two had a conversation for 20 minutes before we started. Like that's wonderful. Because a lot of the research that I read when I was writing here is that a lot of times, and I, I'm guilty of it, if I walk in some place, you know, that I don't know anybody, what's the easiest thing to do? Pull out your phone. Okay. Um, I, I'm a very social person, so that doesn't happen often. Usually it's like work, which is what I was doing. But, um, you know, a lot of times that's the easiest thing. And when I was teaching my class and I would go up to class, there would be like five of my students sitting on the sofa, all on their phones. And I was like... Now, by like a month or two months, some of them had made friends, but some just would rather be with their, you know, yes, question or oh, comment. Yes. Well, I was in response to what yes. you were saying, and I've had this discussion, this discussion a lot. Um, I actually hate it when I'm with people and they have their phones because mm -hmm. um, I've noticed that in social situations, once one person brings out mm -hmm. their phone, everyone is told and signaled to mm -hmm. bring out their phone. And it often occurs when the conversation sometimes comes to maybe a lull, mm -hmm. and it's that point where someone's like, hmm, I don't know what to say, I'm going to go check my phone. And I think that's an excuse and mm -hmm. it's a barrier. And so I always, I have my phone out right now, but <laughs> ironically enough, but I find that it's most important to take those moments and look at your surroundings and think, what can I talk about? What's relevant? Or can I ask them a question? And that really creates more organic conversation. Um, and I think that's a scourge because it says in the title, <laughs> yes. that we suffer from as a generation. Yes. I love that. So I think I hit in one of the things, but since you brought it up, um, this is a much more prevalent, the idea of loneliness and the loss of connectivity is much more lonely. And I'll actually bring up the, the next slide because I think it has data in it. Hold on. Maybe. Okay. Oh, sorry. Um, I'll go back to this one. Hold on. Okay, so here. So um, the lonely society. So 53% of 18 to 34-year-olds had felt depressed because of loneliness compared with just 32% of people over 55. Now, that could, you could read that either way. Um, when you look into later in the article, and um, for those, I can send articles on to, um, to Global. If, if anyone's interested, um, what they said was that the people that are over 55 were never connected. So they had to, they had to be able to entertain themselves. Um, so they weren't afraid of being alone. And they also um, had a much more face-to-face -face conversation. I mean, I grew up with a grandmother that wrote letters every week to family members. Um, how many of you have gotten a non-bill in the mail? I mean, we, we don't even get Christmas cards anymore. They're picture cards, which I'm guilty of. But we don't, we've lost a lot of that because it's easier to text. My birthday was just Tuesday. I think I got three actual phone calls. The rest were all text, Facebook, video, like, I mean, it was, which is wonderful. More people are telling you happy birthday. However, it's like, you have my phone number. Why can't you actually call? Um, so that's, that's, those are one of those things that I look at. So I definitely think I see the over 55, although, you know, most people, probably all of your grandparents are on social media or have smartphones um, based on the data. So what is anyone else? What do you guys think about that? Do you believe? Do you agree? Could it also just be an age thing? Like people are more um, anxious when they're younger, and when they're older, they have matured enough to the point where maybe they don't need people as much as the younger generation does. I like that. I'm gonna say since I'm uh, in between those two numbers. I'm going to say it's because I'm more connected than people over 55. So I feel that anxiety. Maybe I don't feel it as much because I'm also an only child. So I was able to. So I'll give an example. So my birthday, Saturday, I have birthday. I'm in a, I'm in a room of 40 people that are there to be at my birthday party. I have a lot of different groups of friends. At one point, I turned around and I said, wow, I actually feel alone at my own birthday party because everybody, people were on their phones. People were in clicks. Maybe they didn't know other people, and I was kind of like, I don't know where to go, and nothing, those, those social cues that you get, I was like, I don't even know. These eight people are entertaining themselves. These five people are entertaining themselves. These four people are playing a unicorn card game, and it's like, I was like, 
Where do I fit in in here? And again, these are like 40 of my closest friends. And again, I'm like a probably, you know, I'm not a person that like is constantly looking into myself and, and thinking about things. So if I can experience that and I'm not in that age group, um, I do feel like there's something to do with the connectivity. Yes? And something also that he brought up about your, uh, your real friendships versus synthetic friendships, um, I think that having, a, having social media um, ex like really makes us think that we have more friends than we really do. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a problem. I have a personal experience where I will feel like I have an obligation to send someone a happy birthday text mm -hmm. or a Facebook message or so on and so forth, or if I'm on social media, which I, I'm mostly off nowadays, Mm -hmm. But if I'm on Snapchat, I see other people doing stuff. And it makes me think that all these other people have all these friends. Mm -hmm. And I have all these friends who I should be talking to, but most of my days are spread pretty much by myself. Mm -hmm. And so I've learned to be very OK with that. Mm -hmm. um, and I've also realized, like, who is someone who I actually do talk to who I have real engagement with? Mm -hmm. Who is someone who I only spoke to once and I have mm -hmm. a Facebook profile friendship? OK. And so that's something I think is that line is becoming more and more blurred. Right. With the advent of connectivity. Right. Um, and just to give you guys perspective, so as of right now, 190 million Americans have smartphones. Okay. 249 million um, of 18 and over are that have internet capability have like have smartphones, and then 81% of those are on social media. I mean, it's in some sort of form. Now, how many people would say you're active in one platform on social media? Sure, of course. You're that's you're not meet, you're not meeting person to person. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so I'm on ten because I do it for work. So I'm double. So and I'm like you know, and I can't. It's very hard for me to unwire down. Um, so I'm not always the best person to talk to. <laughs> Maybe I'm the best one because I can tell you what not to do. But um, so it was young adults was ninety percent and all together. Um, let's see. Yeah. So sorry. Seventy nine seventy nine percent of adults with internet have social media accounts. So that's going up to 90 year olds um, and that's a lot of stuff um, what I am intrigued with is these these things because I mean loneliness and solitude those aren't new concepts like you said maybe it is and you're right probably um, it is but I, I have to think it has to be something with how how much you grew up with like how much of your life didn't have it so if you're a 55 year old and you only started using the internet let's say 15 years ago 10 years ago um, I mean, you, you lived a good proportion of your life without, without it. So if you're a 35-year-old, you know, you haven't had your entire life. You, you know, smartphones, iPhone's, what, 10 years old. So a smartphone, uh, you know, we didn't really do much with it when it was like, eh, 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 you know, with the three letters. Some of you guys didn't even have those phones. Um, you know, things like that. Facebook is 11, 10, 11 years old. So these are things that, um, and it would be very curious to see what happens to, you know, the five-year-olds. Some of you have nieces and nephews and cousins that, like, literally they're, they're 18 months old and they already know how to swipe. Um, those things are, are stuff that come up. Um, so this was one thing that I thought was intriguing. However, I will say that most people, because we, we read the articles, there's a lot of people over 70 and 80 that are lonely because most of the people have maybe dropped off and there's nobody, they don't have the ability to speak to people and it's not because they don't want to, it's that they don't have the ability. So those of us that are younger are in jobs, are in college, um, you know, had some sort of social interaction as children that have, have gone somewhere, we have that opportunity to connect and we're choosing, sometimes we're choosing to go to the screen or online versus that interpersonal that we have every day. So does anyone have any thoughts on that? Yes. Um, I, I agree that the definitely that connectivity has affected our way to interact socially. But when I look at the generations, for some of my parents, mm -hmm. I also notice that our generation, the millennials, mm -hmm. um, feel like uh, we're more we're softer in terms of accepting things like mm -hmm. loneliness and mm -hmm. just going out to speak to someone else. Mm -hmm. in, in one way or another, it's some kind of pain to be right. self-conscious. Right. Okay. I I agree with that. Did you guys were were you guys all able to hear that? That the generation and you know, we have the silent generation, which is like grandparents and great grandparents where they didn't speak about or complain about anything, and then, you know, the the boomers who are kind of a little bit of the me generation and then the X gener you know, like it, you keep going down and you're right. Um, you know, studies have found that millennials are more interested in social activism, different things. And those are the good parts. I mean, there are so many things you can do on social media. Um, 
so that's, those are, I, I love that. That was great. Yes? Um, this kind of sounds to me like a first world problem thing. And I remember watching a video on this. Um, is that like, these are problems that we are facing as a society, and mm -hmm. that's actually a good thing. And that's, um, we're the first to encounter this problem of this connectivity making us more isolated. Um, and I thought, forgot where I was going to go with that. There was, <laughs> there was a point to that. Um, well, what you just brought up, what you just brought up, I, I don't know because when I was doing research to make sure I felt like, you know, prepared for this, I, I heard something where this guy was talking, maybe it was a TED talk, he was talking about how he was going to, with um, a bunch of students to Haiti to help them build wells. And the first question the parents asked is, is there going to be Wi-Fi? Um, and he's like, uh, these people don't have running water. And then the next question the students are, oh, we found one place where we have Wi-Fi. Again, this is a whole, this is like, Oh, we're going to do this. Then when he gets there, the people in the actual community are like, can we connect on Facebook so that we can have a reaction afterwards? And so he was like, wow, this is, so it wasn't just the parents are, un, you know, like what you're saying is that it is, it, it's not a first world, it's an all world because there are places where, where they have, people might have Wi-Fi or access to, or a phone, but then they don't have running water or paved streets. So what is that? Are we putting an over um, emphasis on technology and that connectivity or the ability to see other things. Um, one of the slides talks about curating our life. Like, are we creating this perfect life online and then not worrying about the other things that are around us? You had a, a comment, yes. Yeah, I was just going to say that so far, based on your points and even your points too, I feel like what if it's because we are not, we're disconnected from our real selves? Like, you see the principle, you said that, like, in, of course, you'd still rather engage with somebody, give them a call rather mm -hmm. than just texting them. I feel mm -hmm. like that principle is dying down in mm -hmm. our generation. Mm -hmm. that they have placed on technology now. Mm -hmm. so, so right, right. And, and that's that's a good one. Um, you and then you, yes. <laughs> so, so for my point of view, so in community also as a youth, but, so when I came in, um, I was in Homestead for my four-minute drive and everything. All I graduated, um, all of my people who graduated with me stayed at Miami Dade you know, Community College. So I was the only person that actually came to a university that was considered to be far away. <laughs> They're like, oh, you have to, so like, I've come over to like the basics of understanding like, you know, asking your major, family, things like that. So eventually I got to the point where it was like, I didn't talk to anyone at all. Mm. And I was like, you know, I had like three friends that I made in my freshman classes and everything from SLS and everything else. But eventually our schedules get mixed. So I didn't want to mm. ever see them, like texting was a little bit difficult too because we all had classes, you know, things got harder. So eventually like I got to the point where I got depressed. Mm. So Well, and I think, it, and the, the lessons that you're learning now in college will apply because you have to network when you're in jobs to get the next job. Like what you said was exactly, and or dating or any sort of thing requires you to get outside of your comfort zone. And I always tell people when, when I'm talking about like LinkedIn, you know, the worst that happens is somebody ignores your email or somebody says, no, I don't have time for you, not interested. That's really generally, in most situations, we fear things more than what's really going to happen. I mean, in most aspects, when we apply for a job, What's the worst that's going to happen? They're not going to contact us back. So you want to look at it like that's a wonderful thing. Not everybody can do that. Um, and, you know, there's all the articles talk about, you know, turning off your phone for an hour. Yes. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, oh. well, <laughs> well, I'm glad that she was saying uh, what? I remember he, you said he was going to speak first. I don't know if you were well, it was him. You'll remember what you said, what you're thinking, right? Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah, I was just going to comment that maybe like the nature of the internet makes us more uh, self-absorbed and mm -hmm. just we pursue only our interests and mm -hmm. it, it kind of closes our mind to, to different kinds of experiences or, or different kinds of knowledge that we mm -hmm. otherwise you know might encounter like mm -hmm. in the real world so right. just, just I mean I would argue that 
I mean, it could also open. I, I see what you're meaning. However, it's the user. Garbage in, garbage out. So the user, if you look at it, I mean, I learn and see things that I would have never seen just talking to a normal person. I mean, like cat videos, whatever it might be. Um, so I do think that if you're open to things, you are absorbed. However, it is the user's experience. Um, when, I, when my husband and I were driving back from Sebring yesterday, and he read an article where it said that by 2021, 80% of all internet traffic will be on smartphones. I mean, think about that. You're, we're just not going to have probably desktops or any of that stuff anymore. So then we're just going to get even more into that phone because, uh, I mean, all, most of us have a working app that they can do. Like my.fiu, does everyone use it on their phone? I do. I mean, you can't do every single thing on it, but, you know, there are things that I'm like, oh, I don't have to wait to go home or I don't have to wait to go to work because I can do it on my phone. So, yes. I really like what she had said that she said that she like pushed herself out of her comfort zone by sharing on her like social media and mm -hmm. uh, challenging herself, challenging herself to do like a new conversation every day. Mm -hmm. And I feel like it ties together with um, this is the thing that I've been thinking about lately about how like a lack of um, or just taking for granted like social dynamics. Mm -hmm. Like when you're most people like it comes naturally for them like in their environment to like find out who they are and to like make connections and like uh, have friendships and all that and then they carry that on throughout their lives. And like especially um, like in with previous generations the your surroundings were pretty much your surroundings for the rest of your life mm -hmm. now as we're more connected um maybe like the plasticity of how to form new social dynamics and how mm -hmm. to like understand social dynamics mm -hmm. it, you know it definitely weakens as you as you age like, right. all, in all senses mm -hmm. um but uh if you take for granted like social dynamics like growing up you know what i'm saying it becomes natural and then now you're not prepared mm -hmm. for uh making for uh reinterpreting and relearning like social dynamics of like the new environment you come into um, so yeah, it's so, like you become isolated, but that's right. anything you can always like learn it. Right, so. and I, I love what you said because it doesn't have to replace. So I think there are people, you know, I meet people at conferences. I may never see that person again, and sometimes there's a spark, and that actually becomes a friendship. You don't have to have an in-person friendship for that to be a friendship, but is it going to be a valuable one? Is it one where it's just you, you wish them happy birthday, once a year, and maybe you like something that pops up in your timeline. So I'm not saying, you know, you can't have relationships online because, you know, I have several of them where I may never see them again. And we actually talk on a regular basis on the phone or, or, or te most of it's text or Gchat, whatever it might be. However, it, it has some substantialism to it. Um, and I do, I liked what you put too, the authentic self. Um, you know, what, and what's even worse is that when we are looking at them, we're, we're naturally comparing ourselves to other people. I mean, that's, I, I, I think that's a human nature thing. Um, I wanna go to the next uh, slide really quick. Let's see. Um, okay, so here it talks about, um, so not just, you know, the feeling of alone, being single, about the quality of the relationship. So I think, you know, this, your age group knows that relationships could always be better, that it's hard, that it's not easy. Um, but you are probably more aware of it than other generations because you're, you've been raised to be allowed to have feelings about things and to talk about it and to question why you're feeling this. Like, I don't think, you know, most maybe 55 year olds, 70 year olds go about thinking, do I know my true authentic self? I doubt it because that's not the culture that they were, that they were raised in. Um, so that is definitely something to think about. Um, so I just wrote kind of some ideas and I loved, um, one of you talked to the counseling center. So these are just kind of things. Again, these are more for freshmen. Most of you guys are past that. But I wanted to kind of talk about looking at this list. What are some of the things that you guys feel made a meaningful impact in you assimilating at FIU? I mean, just being here is obviously one of them. I mean, you're steps ahead. You know, being, being, having been a student and having been an employee, I see how few students take advantage of the things that you have um, on, on a daily basis. So who wants to tell me about maybe some of the things that you feel like are really meaningful that I could go back to my first year experience students and say, um, you know, these are something that was really helpful for me. Anyone? Yeah, oh, sorry. Well, you already went, so I'll go with you. Yes. <laughs> Free pizza in the GC. I mean, come on, D donuts for to for fundraisers. Yes. Um, it's like you can't underestimate the importance of taking care of yourself before mm -hmm. you try to like ace every class. Right. Yes. What I like is finding your passion. Mm 
because uh, mm -hmm. I find that most of my friends I make are people who share my passion. So I play basketball, mm -hmm. I work out, and I go to the gym. And I actually meet most of my friends doing that because they mm -hmm. happen to find, find the same interests that I have. Right. And so that's where I meet people. And I, and I don't actually participate in a lot of other clubs. Mm -hmm. But if you have a passion in a club um, and there's a club for it, you, should, you have no reason not to join that club because you're probably going to find people who feel exactly the same way about that topic and you're going to really, you're going to hit it off. Where I think that, that for me at least has been the strongest factor. Right. Okay. Um, yes. For me, it would have to be the joining the extracurricular activities and the assuming the, the leadership role. Mm -hmm. Because like she was mentioning, it's more of a self thing, you know, it's like, do you want to be, you know, that person that everyone's so jealous about, like, mm -hmm. you know, and for me, like freshman year, like I was one of those people where she was like, oh, I was so lonely, you know, I didn't know anybody. But then I was like, you know, I want to do this. Some choose stay lonely mm -hmm. so others do act upon it right. you know and it's um it was something that you know i wanted to like veer off because depression is a very serious thing and like she was mentioning it's very serious like you need in this case she needs a counseling mm -hmm. and other people have to go through it too mm -hmm. i didn't want to veer in that direction so mm -hmm. i took the other route and with those two in mind like for me it was just really nice because i am an authority i am in a co-ed frat you know mm -hmm. and i am going to start um doing ted talks Mm -hmm. like, yeah, my public speaking professor, he was like, this is a union application. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, you need a professor to, like, get you in there, yeah. And not only that, you know, I'm also going to do law school, so it's like, I have to speak to people, you know, mm -hmm. taking the LSAT in June, so it's like, right. oh, yeah, and all that right. stuff. So all those things, it's just, it makes me, like, you know, like, a, like an available person mm -hmm. for not only grad school, but for myself as well. Right. So it's kind of, you know, like a mental. I think it's good to have lists and thoughts like this. Let me go, go to her. Yes? Um, mine would probably be, be open to opportunities. Mm -hmm. um, that's probably my biggest one. I've been in college for quite a while, um, <laughs> seven years to be exact. Uh, but I'm graduating in May. Yay! Yeah. Awesome. Uh, thank you. <laughs> but um, I think the biggest thing when it comes to opportunities, I, if I look back on my entire college, just career in general, um, I, if, if I didn't take every single opportunity that was given to me, I wouldn't have learned, I wouldn't have grown, I wouldn't have um, met the different people that I've met. Um, I've been to leadership because it was a, it, it was a leadership conference. If mm. any of you guys don't know the about BBC it, I one? recommend the BBC one? look into it. Mm -hmm. It's actually leadership conference. It's um, CLS. Mm. Uh, Stephanie and CLS was mm -hmm. the one that told me about it. It's not even a FIU program. It's oh. a program that involves every other university around in Florida. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. UM, FAU, NOVA, nice. Palm Beach County, um, like everywhere. Okay. So it was really, it's a one week, um, a one week leadership, leadership conference, um, or not conference, but a retreat. Um, and it's amazing. I mean, I, I talked to all of the leadership participants and it's been a hundred and, 164 days since we went to leadership and we still keep in contact that's wonderful so that like we have like that reminder like of just like every day we update it like it's been it's day 164 165 mm -hmm. so that we can keep reminding ourselves and motivating ourselves mm -hmm. to keep um going putting into action and taking right. uh, opportunities but i mean other things i mean i i got to study abroad twice um, I went to Spain and Morocco. I went to Dubai. I just got back from a spring study abroad, or not spring, uh, winter break study abroad. I went to Dubai, Morocco, um, Abu Dhabi, Surbani, Yama, Scat, like Canada, because we had a 12 hour layover. Um, <laughs> and it's, I never thought that I would be going on study abroad, and that became available. And then I took that opportunity, and I've learned so much from it. Yeah. So it, it was definitely, I encourage everyone to do study abroad if you guys haven't done it. <laughs> Not here on the study or study, of off, or, yeah, study abroad office. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's that's really it. It's just being open to opportunities and not being so close-minded. Yeah. Like if something attracts you, go for it. Yeah. And, and the opportunities was much longer with the notes I got. I mean, they were like, keep your door open. Um, and, you know, one big they sa it said was like, you know, part of that getting to know yourself is knowing when you're kind of getting into those little funks. Now, obviously, if there's something clinical, that's different. But we all go through time periods. Maybe we're, we get a bad 
a bad grade on a test, or maybe we break up with someone, or our friend is acting weird. Like recognize these these signs about yourself and find the things that help you um, get past them. You know, sometimes some people need to be alone. And 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 again, the difference between solitude and loneliness are very different. We need time to refresh. Um, you know, ho- have any of you guys done MBTI where you've tested yourself as far as like what your letters are? Okay, so they talk a lot about um, whether you're an extrovert or an introvert. An extrovert like me, I will, I suck my energy out of you. You guys are like my personal batteries. However, introverted people, if you're in a class and you have to speak, some of us have classes where we have to speak. Um, if you're in, associa- in, in like a situation like this where you feel compelled to speak because everyone's speaking, that can be very draining. So when that happens, you need that time. So, you know, be very clear that I'm t- there's a difference between feeling lonely like there's, a hundred people in a room and nobody gets me or there's nobody I feel like I can talk to or relate to versus I need to just be quiet I want to read a book Um, now if you're not feeling that I I need to be quiet I need to study before something then that's leaving yourself open to the opportunities which means if you're in a dorm leaving your door open if you have class maybe showing up 20 minutes early and not just walking in when the door when the you know the theoretical bell rings so that you have the opportunity to talk to people so those are kind of the things that but I, you know I need to keep it short so you guys would read I think mentors is a wonderful thing um, through my program in higher education they made a very big point to students that are working at college or you know master students and, and doctoral students that are working at colleges that one meaningful relationship with someone who is not a teacher or a student but who is staff or faculty has one of the highest percentages in making sure that you actually graduate so those of you so usually it's the onus is on us to reach out to you guys you know so i make a big deal in elevator to like talk to people that i know because my floor is three classrooms so if someone's not coming to my to my office i know they're going to class so probably i'm you know knowing i'm like hey have a great class or i ask some questions but i understand that in a large college like fiu i may be the only conversation this person has all day so i take that very seriously and for those of you who feel that keenly are aware of that dynamic, saying good morning to someone, holding a door open, just greeting people in a busy city like we are can really make an impact. They call it the lollipop moment. It's in a really famous TED talk. And you never know when you make that, you know, that connection with someone. Um, does someone else want to talk about one of the things here? Um, and I want to bring up, so I, sorry, I, for, I forgot your name, but I know you as a freshman took um, advantage of a lot of our opportunities. I mean, really, if you have things that you want to do, you pay for pretty much every department here on campus. That's part of your tuition, or even if you have a scholarship, someone's paying for it. So take advantage of this stuff. I remember thinking, oh my gosh, he's a, you know, he's a freshman and he is, he is on it. He knows what he wants to do. Now, I didn't know. I still don't really know what I want to do the rest of my life. I have tons of goals. However, you know, um, if you do know what you want to do, seek those things out ahead of time because it does get harder progressively once you get out of the university because there's no there's no career and talent development office at your job. They're kind of they want you to stay there or they want to get rid of you. Um, so that this is something where you have the opportunity. And of course, since we are the university that we are, I worked full time throughout my entire every degree that I did here. Always had a full time job, so I didn't take advantage of a lot of things. However, I did do study abroad. I couldn't do an entire semester because you know I had bills to pay, but I did a ten week course, or you do a two week course. So don't limit yourself. Um, find out first before you you know you eliminate one of these things as being something for you. Because um, the great thing about being about a, at a large university is there are a lot of resources that other students don't have. So let's see. Um, okay, so I talked about this a little bit briefly. So there's also a desire to present a side of ourselves rather than our whole selves. In this status update culture, we don't really live experiences, we live them to report them. We're editing ourselves rather than actually being ourselves. So how many of you believe that this is possible? I mean, I certainly do. Um, I try really hard to talk about the bad things. Um, I, I'm a two-time cancer survivor. I didn't say anything the first time because I was like, oh, I don't want to depress people. When it came back a second time and I had to have surgery, I like wrote a very painful for me letter, but I very, very, very strongly believe that we see too much of like the perfection of people's lives on social media. And I have a great life, but there's also some sucky aspects of it. And I do try to share them when appropriate. I'm not saying everyone has to, but I'm cognizant. I have coworkers who are like, oh, you know, my weekend was depressing. I saw all the fun things that people do. I'm like, I'm like you saw an hour of what they did. That is the reality of life. Not everybody, even like people who have amazing lives still have bad moments. So um, does anyone have anything they want to share about this quote? I mean, I saw snaps and, and things like that. Yes. I'm just reminded of uh, like when I go to concerts, for instance, mm-hmm. people will watch the entire concert through their phone yes. as opposed to just kind of being in the moment of having that. 
you know. authentic experience, you know? Like, why did you come? Just so you could show other people? Yeah. Yep. Well, hopefully some of them maybe to relive the experience. Um, sure. But I, but I do. You spent a hundred dollars. You should enjoy it with your own eyes, not yeah. just the buyer. Yes. Yeah. Uh, question. Yes. Well, something that well I've seen it a couple of times where people posted it and shared it on social media. It's like um, an idea that um, it's almost like people are on their phones more constantly and consistently, even when they're alone, because they're afraid to face themselves. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's something that I think I've realized <coughs> as well. Mm-hmm. Like, Mm-hmm. So I think a large problem is that we don't really know ourselves mm-hmm. and we're afraid to face ourselves. We're afraid mm-hmm. to face our fears and things like mm-hmm. that. So yeah. I think it's important that we like we take our time alone and be mm-hmm. consistent with ourselves. Yeah. I think that's I think that's what's missing. Right. right. And it could be your thoughts. It could also be I'm a b- book reader. I mean I'm definitely very I would like to work on my wiredness. However, I mean, I read books. Um, you know, I do do a lot of things. But what I find is that, like, it's hard for me to go to sleep because I just don't want to put the phone down. That's where my problem is. Is that, like, just like a good book, you know, like the internet, Facebook. It's it's a good book for me. So um, so I don't think I escape my thoughts. And I do. Like, this was something that I was like, this is scary to to apply and be selected and speak in front of people about a topic. So I challenged myself to do it. No one else in my department had done it. And so I felt like so I do try to push myself as you like. You, you have to, if you want to grow and you, you put yourself in uncomfortable situations, the worst, again, the worst that's going to happen, you flop, nobody talks, um, you never do it again, uh, <laughs> things like that. So that's kind of, and that's what's so wonderful about working at or go, being in the university is that you have so many opportunities to get to know yourself. Yes. I just wanted to say, I just got back recently. I was in Morocco for a little over three weeks. Oh. Mm-hmm. And people mm-hmm. like that. And I saw people go to like very great lengths to set up their Instagram shot mm-hmm. and waited for the sun to be there. <laughs> they, they did not have a drink, so they set up so they could look like they were having tea at sunset with uh, this yes. beautiful backdrop. But they were really just like working, spending yeah. like mm-hmm. two hours waiting for the shot. Right. It goes on their Instagram, it's just like, wow, what a fairy tale existence. Right. But it's actually like a lot of work. And mm-hmm. the, the main it's not enjoying your travels so much. Yeah. It's a very different way of looking yeah. at it. And then when you're seeing it just like scrolling through Instagram, it looks just like a dream. But, right. you know, I, I saw that they weren't really experiencing the moment mm-hmm. as much. And it was interesting. Yeah. Which is probably why it's a nice thing that most of us don't have the ability to text or we can take pictures on our phones, but we can't really be in that moment. I mean, I don't pay for international. So like, at least that's one thing I do. And, you know, cruises, yeah, it's very expensive. So yes. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, to figure out, okay, th- for a certain amount of time I'm going to be on social media, then I'm going to get off it. Um, and since you brought up Morocco and yeah, just traveling, <laughs> um, si- uh, when I studied abroad in, in Spain and Morocco, I came back and I realized I had no pictures of myself. The only pictures that I had were like, I had like maybe a couple pictures, but like most of the pictures were of the landscape mm-hmm. or like what I went to. And then I, I realized, I'm like, okay, well, I have this opportunity to go study abroad again. I need to take pictures mm-hmm. of myself. But then I was like, I don't want to be taking pictures of myself the entire time because then it's like, no, like I want to actually enjoy it. So I found a happy medium and I was able to do, um, I, I was able to do it. And I also, um, for countries such as Dubai and Oman and all this other stuff, uh, you also have to keep in mind how people in, like the out, outside view Americans. Mm. Um, <laughs> You don't want to be taking uh, selfies and pictures in every single location also, just because they're going to look at you as very self-absorbed and mm-hmm. just not a good person. So like that was another thing to keep in mind, but it's actually just kind of stuck with me like when I got back and right. even before that. Right. So it was really cool. I know. I was out last night with friends I hadn't seen for a long time, and I, I went home. And I'm like, oh, we never took a picture. Um, and it's almost like I feel like, did it actually happen? Um, but I, I'm not that, that shallow. But it's hard when you do it professionally because then it's, I think it's, it soaks in even more. Yes? Um, going off of taking selfies, um, I hate taking pictures of selfies of, of myself. Uh-huh. <laughs> but what I noticed is that I'm a lot more, I'm 
a lot more confident in myself when I haven't seen myself in a while. Um, every time I take a selfie of myself, I look, I'm like, oh, I don't like how I look in that angle. Oh, I'm, this looks weird. Oh, my face is crooked. Mm. Um, and I don't see that when I look in the mirror. I don't, I actually feel like I'm a really good looking, handsome, confident person. Um, and I can navigate my way through the world. But then I take pictures of myself. I'm like, oh man, this is what I look like. Or like, <laughs> or like, or like you hear your voice on the oh, yeah. voice. Oh, God, that's what I sound like? Yeah. But, yeah, exactly. But to me, I have this resounding low voice. I'm going to hear my voice on a recording, and it's just, like, not that. <laughs> so my point being is I think the more that we're trying to focus on, like, I need to get the right one it, mm -hmm. and taking away from being in the moment, it's also, like, trying to get the right one and that everything else is subpar. It's not mm -hmm. perfect, mm -hmm. and it needs to be perfect. I'm very confident in who I am when I'm not looking at myself. Right. So I spend very little time looking at myself. I know. Okay. Uh, we, we talked about a little bit about that. So um, another myth is that loneliness is typically associated with being alone, but it also affects people when they're sad. So I talked about that, the well-connected. Um, has anyone else had moments like the one I described where where you're in a, a crowd of people and you feel alone or you're, you just don't feel connected to them, whether you know them or not? Yes. Kind of connecting it to going away for college. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when I'm spending time with high school friends, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they have their own kind of life, and they've developed in a way that I haven't, and mm -hmm. I've developed in a way that they haven't, right. and I just feel very disconnected to being alone right. with them. Um, so that's, I think, another aspect of college mm -hmm. loneliness, is right. that you have a very different past than everyone you meet at college, mm -hmm. and now you have a very different future than everyone you left behind, so it's right. really hard to totally connect with anyone in that situation. Right. And, you know, I, I feel like, and I see that, and for me, you know, I lucked out that I didn't, you know, have Facebook with my high school friends. So when I connected, so I'm connected with like 400 of the 600 students I went because I went to Gables, um, and so we're all very connected on Facebook. However, we missed like that that college experience. You know, maybe there was three I really kept in touch with that I wrote letters to or I emailed to. Um, so it's like there's like I have that connection of childhood with them, and now I have that connection of maybe the last 10 years. But there is a whole pocket where you know I don't. I'm, unless they tell me, unless I make that effort, I don't know what they did in those time periods. Like the people they met, I meet them as husbands, not as the, who they dated and things like that. So did someone else have something to say over here? Um, yes? Um, I also think like when we understand ourselves mm -hmm. and interpret the world mm -hmm. through like this publicness mm -hmm. of like your day, mm. Mm -hmm. and, like, it's never that you feel not isolated, you know? Mm -hmm. It's a constant, like, working towards being. Right, right. I don't know if there's ever, like, an achievement of happiness. Or, like, I love that. Um, Are we ever going to be 100% happy? I mean, is that possible? You know? I mean, we have probably 100% happy moments, um, but... And we're maybe, more, I, I, I want to be more happy than I'm not happy. That's kind of my goal. Um, I think 100% is really hard to because I have goals and aspirations. So it's not a negative thing. Yes. I was just thinking that yesterday too because um, I was having a conversation with a friend of mine. We always get into deep talks mm -hmm. about all kinds of weird stuff. And um, we were basically saying how nothing in this world is pretty much like everlasting, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like back then, the whole idea of taking the pictures to make those moments last forever so you can go mm -hmm. make a record to that or look back on it. Now it's in our time. Now it's all about indulging mm -hmm. and like printing this like facade of what mm -hmm. this should be like or how like the status of this should be when it's not really real. Because even the people who have all the money, all the all the mm. beauty or whatever you want to call it, like right. they're probably more insecure than we are because they have to spend so much time mm -hmm. indulging into that whole act, and it's not really capturing right. like the real right. like the real identity. If that makes sense. Yeah. So I feel like we're never really gonna ever be completely happy because mm -hmm. things happen, we have flaws and all types of things, mm -hmm. but as long as we're working towards that and we make ourselves aware of the things that affects us mm -hmm. in different ways, then mm -hmm. that's what really counts. I feel like that's the, the main point of it all. Um, before we start, has anyone read the article by the 27-year-old woman that recently died and she wrote a letter to herself? Uh, yes, I mean, I would definitely say um, what, so she wrote a letter because she knew she was dying. She's 27, and she, she, she said all the things that, like, basically, it's kind of a lesson on just focus on the things that actually matter. And what I took from it is that some of the things that stress me out or really disappoint me in life 
are probably not things that are really that important. Like there are irritations, they're not, they don't make my life horrible. They are an irritation. Like, you know, maybe you want a better job, you want to go back to school, you want to graduate. Those are all things, they're not, they're not life and death situations, they're not, they're really not true, um, uh, horrible things, especially when we compare ourselves to, I mean, we are very fortunate to live in, in the world that we live in and, and be in school. There's so many students that don't have access to, to a college degree or clothes or running water or different things like that. So it doesn't minimize the thing, but if you put it in perspective, it can help you control. And I know we've heard the thing is that like, the big thing that I've taken this year is the things that I worry about right now, are they going to matter in five years? Like, are they really that important in five years? So these, I think we have to like, you have to think who you are, know yourself, and come up with things to remind yourself of this perspective. Just like 90% of the things we worry about don't happen. There are really things um, that, that having that perspective on things is really important. And it's okay to, to feel like not, not be able to interact in the same level with those friends, but they have value because they helped you become who you are now. So you don't like leave them the, the gold, the silver, whatever you want to do. However, you may have to transition to maybe they're not as they're not the daily importance that they were before, and that's okay. We have to be okay. I mean, that's part of growing um, on stuff. You know, if you hold on to something like like she was saying, you know, if people don't have the same goals as you, they can distract from you, but they can also be your biggest cheerleaders. So you have to look at every single person. I feel like um, as an opportunity. Um, okay, so let me see. So we're getting low. Uh, we did that one. Um, okay, so uh, did, we talked about this. So does okay. So this is a quote that I saw. I used to think that the worst thing in life was to end up alone. It's not. The worst thing in life is to end up with people who make you feel alone. Does anyone know who said this? Yes. I think it was. I don't know. Maybe Robin Roy. Yes. Yes. And I saw that, and that made me feel like here's someone who uh, millions of people loved him. Obviously, he had clinical depression but there there is something to think about that um you know is it are you with the people that make you feel imp like important fit, make you feel confident that understand your goals um and again it doesn't mean cut out the people but you have to have a balance of people that are, are there also in that thing that don't make you feel alone and and it takes really growing up and knowing yourself to be able to cut those out I mean, I defriended my first person a week ago on Facebook. I mean, I've been on Facebook 10 years, and I was like, I will never defriend people because you can't unmeet someone in real life. But this person was so toxic, and what they posted, I was like, I can't even unfollow them because I'm associating myself with them. Uh, someone will think that this person is, that I'm endorsing this person by being friends with her. And I understood that very well in LinkedIn, because LinkedIn, I'm only connected with people that I know personally. Um, and Facebook too, but maybe I met someone for one day, and a lot of the articles talk about it. We meet someone, you meet someone at this presentation. You may not speak again. Do they need to be involved in, you virtu in your virtual life? Those kind of things. So it's okay to be constantly wondering about your own connectivity and your own rules about social media. It's okay to cut them out. You know, whatever, you, it's, your, it's your life is your social media account. Yes. Well, one of the articles that I read talked about quantity versus quality. So is it important to have 1,200, so you have 1,200 friends on Facebook, but how many people of these people do you actually talk to? Like talk, talk, to, and when I say talk, I mean text, like that you have an actual conversation with this person. 10%, 8%, okay, uh, you, yes. Yeah, I read like, um, cause I read like 
researchers that obviously do conduct research based on social media mm -hmm. and how does it affect our psychology and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And they all say the same thing, that based on their studies, we are becoming, that our generation is becoming narcissistic because mm -hmm. of what we are seeing with mm -hmm. so-and-so has a Bentley or mm -hmm. someone has a has an PhD, they have a good job, they live in a five-bedroom mansion, mm -hmm. stuff like that. And we are seeing this and mm -hmm. what's happening is because we're seeing these pictures, then we're feeling down, mm -hmm. and then now we're trying to drive ourselves into that kind of world of, okay, right. well, I want to have that, and then what we do have, then we are very right. self-absorbed, and then research have also conducted about our empathy, and then mm -hmm. they're saying that our empathy is deteriorating because we're more focused on this sort mm -hmm. of right. device than, let's say, our parents or right. the generation before, that there was no... Right. Media or technology or whatnot. Right. I'll clarify, it's scalability. Because keeping up with the Jones has been forever. So our parents, my parents, my grandparents, there was always that pressure, but it, the scale of it, because you maybe saw the people that were in your town or maybe in a newspaper, we can literally see, what is it, three billion people on social media in the world. We can see everything, the good and the bad. So it's definitely always been, but I think the scalability of it and the pressure of it is much more, uh, you know, conscious. We had a couple of people over here. Yes. I was just going to say, um, it's interesting when we're talking about being alone, how uh -huh. uh, everyone has been like conflating their social media presence with their actual real presence, mm -hmm. and like no one even notices that they're doing that. Yeah. And also, when I don't think it's bad to feel alone though, like because we are alone. There's mm -hmm. no most of us are born uh, born alone, and we die alone. I mean, unless you're a twin, you are born alone. Um, <laughs> yeah, and not, or maybe not allowing it to to paralyze you. I think that's what you know, and and not having those meaningful conversations with people. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it was more about just connecting with your college friends, I think. Mm -hmm. like yes. So do you, if you remember back mm -hmm. to those times. Oh, oh, those oh, old times, yes, <laughs> yes, tell me. Yes. No, 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 no. <laughs> I look great, I don't care. Like, mm -hmm. When it was like that, yes. um, do you feel like eventually, um, like over time, you fell victim to that? Too? Not victim, but you mm -hmm. became a product of it too? Like you started noticing that you were kind of falling into that yeah. Wave that yeah. Is yeah, of course. I'm a human being. I mean, like I said, uh, when when Facebook, I was working here at Kaplan Test Prep. My cousin is younger than me, and so she was a little bit younger than me. So she was able to join Facebook with her FIU. So let's say that was 2004, 2005. I joined 2007. So as soon as you, because I was on a campus, and you know, my cousins were all on Facebook. So I joined right away. Um, as soon as they let grown-ups in, I guess you would say. And, and then I remember the horrifyingness of my mom joining Facebook. I was like, oh my gosh. But my mom, like she said, she uses it. She's like, I have 110 friends on Facebook. And of course you're like, oh, that, that's it, mom. But, like, <laughs> but that's, that's those things that you fall in. You know, but she has actually more friends. And she's, you know, people write her and email her. So um, it, it is very interesting. And of course, since I do it for work, I think it, maybe I'm not. The, like I look at my husband who really only likes Twitter. He has a Facebook account, and I have to tag him or else his mom, like, kills me. She's like, I need more pictures of my son. So it's not even me. Um, sometimes I'll be at an event, and I won't even take a picture of him because he doesn't like pictures. He's like you. He's like, eh, I don't care. So, you know, I try to really respect other people's feelings about social media. The ones that want 100 pictures, I'll sit in 100 pictures of them. The ones that don't want any. Like I said last night, none of, I know none of the people cared about being in a picture, so I didn't bring it up. But it's hard for me because it's what I do at work. Like, I asked her to take a picture, and it's not because I need a picture for me personally. It's because... I do it for everyone else at work, and it looks weird if I don't do it. So I'll make someone else post it, but I'm very cognizant of the role that I have professionally, and sometimes it bleeds over. And sometimes I look, I'm like, oh, I haven't posted on my own Instagram in a week. What's wrong with me? And I'm like, wait a But I'm very big in every presentation I do. You own your social media, just like you own your phone. Like, I hate when people are like, why didn't you text me back? I'm like, do you pay my $180 to T-Mobile? No, you don't. So I control my phone, even though it's hard to fall victim to other people controlling it. I also control my social media, good and bad. So I always tell students, have your plan, clean it out, change your direction. If you no longer want, um, if you no longer want that, and it's okay. Like, why was I holding to this belief? I can't delete people. It was almost like I was more 
impressed with myself for having that belief than examining why I had it. So I think it's very important that as you grow and mature that you think about what you're using it for. You know, you can use it to network. People find jobs. Um, if you only, if you don't want the social aspects, use LinkedIn. Um, and you have your own rules. So Facebook and LinkedIn, I'm very, like, I have to meet the person in, in, in person. But Instagram, if you have something that I'm interested in, I'll allow you to follow me. So it's like having rules for your own, um, your own social media is very important because I think you have to have a little bit of a sense of control or else it will, you know, it could run away from you. Um, so the last thing, uh, increasing, we mustn't lose, sorry, touch with the physical community around us. And I think that's what most of the articles were saying, that there's, there are great aspects to connectivity. I really think it's wonderful that we can talk to people, that you can maintain a relationship, you can game, you can do all these things. However, I am hopeful that myself and others don't do it at the expense of person-to-person -person relationships or established ones. You know, again, taking the value out of it, um, uh, I think is very important. Um, and then I just kind of wrote some things. For those of you that are challenged in how to um, plug, you know, how to meet people or, or speak to people, to unplug. Again, I'm working on that. I'll certainly, I'll figure out how to unplug personally. Um, becoming a better listener, um, engage in your community. I think it's just so important. I really wish if I could go back and relive my FIU experience, I would have been much more involved. So I progressively have gotten better <laughs> as I've matured through here. So I've spent almost my entire adult life here because uh, for school and then Kaplan, I was actually here. Um, so there's only been three years out of my entire adult life that I haven't been on an FIU campus. Um, and so I'm cognizant of the things that I should have done in my undergrad. Um, I should have been a better student, which I did. And, and really getting involved in the groups that are relevant to your future career or relevant to your personal interests. It's really important. Um, find like minds, people that, but also have people that challenge you. So you don't, you, you don't want to have 20 friends that all think the same as you because that's not the world we live in, I believe. And you're agreeing with me. Um, uh, so have people that you feel comfortable with, that you, you know, that it's a safe place for you to have conversation, but make sure that you have people that also, you know, maybe you're a liberal arts major, but you have some STEM friends. You know, you, you want to have some, some uh, awareness of other things that are around you. Um, reconnect with the long lost friends. Some of them are valuable. What I have found with the ones that I reconnected with, some of them I'm like, wow, you are not a Miami person anymore because people leave Miami and they become Southern. They have accents and they become very different politically and all sorts of things from you. That's okay because you have that shared experience. I can't, you know, that, that, that was the time of my life where I became who I was. And this time in your 20s is where you're becoming, you're solidifying who you are as a person. So it's really important. I wish I had friends from my undergrad. We just didn't do that back then. Um, now I have tons of friends from my master's degree program and from jobs. So social media I think of has really helped me to maintain those relationships that I, I just didn't do when I was in that moment. Um, and invite people over to your house to, you see someone eating alone. I, it's hard. Like I, you know, obviously since I do the marketing, I see people with their headphones on. I pass by everyone watching office, you know, uh, the office and there's like five shows that everybody on campus watches. I'm going to tell you, but I try to have conversations with people. If they're studying, I never bother them. But I'm like, if you're watching the office and you take those headphones on, I'm in there just to talk about internships, whatever it might be. So try to find, try to make eye contact if you want to, if you have the time, if you're rushing off to work, it's hard, but really look for the opportunity to interact with people. And obviously, I don't really think I need to make this with you guys because you're here doing something that, yes, hopefully a lot of you guys are getting points for it, but you still don't have to do that. You're like, I always look at it, you're like the 10% the above the, the average student that's here at FIU, but you can take it even more. So like pat, your, pat yourselves on the shoulders and then see how you can kick it up to help yourself personally and professionally. Does anyone else have any last thoughts? Did you guys like the topic? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. And if any of you want to ever talk about this or visit me or talk about anything related to your professional development, I am in Sassy or Sasky, whatever you want to call it, the new glass building um, on the third floor. That's our, our department. Um, and you can follow us on FIU Career or email me at sgonza at fiu.edu. And, you know, obviously my passion is branding, but I want... I want everyone to have the opportunity to, 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 to meet your academic and career goals. Yes, question. S. Gonza. So remember my old name. G-O-N-Z-A. So S. Gonza. And then all of the things that I run are FIU career. So that's pretty easy. Or career.fiu.edu. Any of you? Does anyone know what Handshake is? Has anyone made their Handshake account? Yay. OK. Handshake is how you find jobs and internships. So anyways, but I'll be here for a few minutes. If anyone wants to see you, thank you so much. This has been wonderful. You guys made a really scary.
scared. I mean, I wanted to vomit an hour ago. So thank you. You guys have been great. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and semester. Yay, yes. Academic Video Services within the Division of Information Technology at Florida International University.